I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on drives, both solid state and hard drive. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R640 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, let's hop in. Uh, this video is going to continue our series. It's going to be specifically focused on drives. We're going to cover solid state and hard drives. So let's just go and hop in. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about uh, the different uh, types of drives that are compatible, the different speeds, the different sizes. And then what we're going to do is actually install some of them, which is super easy since it's a hot swap machine. And then we're going to show you how to test your drives using Dell Diagnostics in a cool tool that we're a big fan of that's called HD Sentinel. It lets you know the power on hours and the health score. And it's just a great secondary tool that you can use outside of Dell Diagnostics, which I'm also a very, very big fan of Dell Diagnostics because what we're going to show you is not only just going to test the drives, it's going to test the whole machine, but most importantly what we wanted to do here is test the drives. So we're going to show you all those tools. And if you have any other tools that you like, if you're using a, a different uh, tool to test your drives, your solid state drives, I'd love people to drop comments down below. There's a ton of different great uh, drive testing tools out there and it's always fun to hear what people are using. So, all right, we'll top in. Uh, so what are the different types of drives that are compatible with the R640? Well, you have SAS, you have SATA, and you have solid state drives. And within solid state drives, you technically have SAS and SATA, right? So what with SAS, the different speeds that you're going to get are 7.2K, 10K, and 15K. The 7.2 Ks with SAS, SAS are going to be your uh, rounder capacities, your 1 terabytes, your 2 terabytes, your 10K, 15K are going to be kind of the oddball sizes, your 300 gig, your 600 gig, your 900 gig, your 1.2 terabyte, your 2.4 terabyte, all those are going to be your 10K, 15K type of drives. Um, with solid state drives, you can use 3 gigabit per second, 6 gigabit per second, or 12 gigabit per second, and it depends on if you're using SAS or SATA, whether you get 6 or you get 12. So your SAS SSDs are going to get you 12 gigabit per second, and your SATA SSDs are going to get you 6 gigabit per second. And it, technically, there's even uh, SAS drives that are out there that are 12 gigabit per second right now, but they're just going to clock down to, I'm sorry, that are 24 gigabit per second, but they're just going to clock down to 12 gigabit. So just know that if you pop into 24, it's just going to slow down to 12, which is still great. Okay. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, max sizes per type. And that really depends on what um, uh, size of drive you have, whether 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch. Okay, so for SAS, if you're using a 3.5 inch drive, your max capacity is going to be 18 terabytes. With SATA, it's going to be 16 terabytes. And with your solid state drive, it's going to be 7.68 terabytes. Now, technically, that's what Dell says, and you can actually go a little bit higher. I've put in 22 on the SAS side and 20 on the SATA side, but I'm sure in the future there's going to be even higher capacities that will also work. So if you have something that you've used that's a little bit higher, please uh, drop a comment down below. We'd love to hear about it. Now, with 2.5 inch, the capacities are much less, uh, and that's the big benefit of large form factors as a whole, or 3.5 inches as a whole, is you can just stuff in huge storage drives for a much cheaper price per terabyte, but with 2.5 inch, you're going to get 2.4 on 2.4 terabytes on SAS, 2 terabyte on SATA, and again 7.68 terabyte on SSDs. So with a small form factor chassis like an 8 bay or a 10 bay, you're better off with a solid state drive because not only is it faster, you can get a higher scalability overall. All right, so now that we know a little bit about the uh, different types, speeds, sizes, all that good stuff, we're going to show you how to physically install them, which again is super easy because it's a hot swap, and then we're going to show you how to test it with Dell Diag and HD Sentinel. Let's get going. All right, so to install our new drive, we're going to remove our old drive, so just push the red circle, just pull your tray out, slides nice and easy. This is a nice uh, little 1.8 terabyte SAS drive but we're going to upgrade it to a solid state drive which is going to be way better performance overall so we're going to open and we're going to line everything up and just slide this in once it gets to a stopping point you're going to close your tray make sure it's fully inserted it's just that easy i know it's the quickest upgrade it's so nice it's hot swap it's a very easy upgrade and upgrading to a solid state drive is one of the things i always recommend to boost your performance as a whole it is incredibly easy so now we'll show you how to do a 3.5 inch all right, so now we're going to do a 3.5 inch. Before I take the old one out and install a new one, I wanted to point out two things. So this is what a hard drive would look like in here. It's definitely much thicker. And then you have your solid state drive. Now with a solid state drive, I wanted to point out 
you have this converter or this adapter right here so that you can use a 3.5 inch tray. You put in your adapter and your 2.5 inch will work perfectly fine and you still have a hot swap solution. So when you go to our site and you're looking to upgrade your SSDs, we offer this whole kit so that you don't have to worry about it, that you could buy the tray with the adapter and it's a whole solution so you just pop it right in and you don't have to worry. So let's go ahead and remove our old drives, just push the red circle similar to the small form factor. It's a little 500, 500 gig old boot drive and now we're going to install our new solid state drive. So open your tray, line everything up and just slide it in. Again, it's a very, very easy upgrade. One of the things I always recommend if you're just looking to boost the performance of your 640, extend the life, upgrading to SSDs is one of the best things that you can do. Now we're going to show you how to test this with Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to test your hard drives and solid state drives with Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. Both Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel are great tools for not just testing your hard drives, but for testing all of the other components in your system. Specifically, Dell Diagnostics will test more than just your hard drives. It'll go ahead and test your graphics card, your CPU, your memory, um, your RAID card, your network card, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so it's a really neat tool that allows you to be able to see whether your system is in good health or not. And then HD Sentinel in, uh, in particular will just test your hard drives but you can see things like the power on hours um, it'll give you like a health score to tell you like how much life the drive still has so it is a really cool tool both of them are, are very easy to use provide a lot of information and in this video I'm going to show you how to use both of them so let's go ahead and get started first we're going to go ahead and get started with Dell Diagnostics so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and boot up your server. Once you boot up your server, you want to go ahead and press F10. Um, and this will go ahead and bring us into the lifecycle controller. Once we're in lifecycle controller, we can go ahead and scroll down to where it says hardware diagnostics. And then we want to go ahead and click on run hardware diagnostics. And then you'll get this little warning right here. So it's just going to say it's going to take several minutes. So we can go ahead and accept that. Um, and this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So actually getting into Dell Diagnostics and actually running the test is pretty simple. So we're just going to let these tests run. And these tests can say, take several minutes up to several hours. So go ahead and just wait this out. If you're familiar with 12th gen and 13th gen uh, Dell PowerEdge servers, um, you'll notice that this looks very, very different. In the 12th gen and 13th gen, you can actually see the different tests on the left-hand side of the screen, um, and you have a lot more information on the middle of the screen. Um, and it's just a lot more simpler of a screen, but it's just going to go ahead and run through all of these tests. Um, and at the bottom, you can kind of you can pause these tests if you want, um, and then you can also see like what test specifically is running at that current time, an estimate of how much time is left for that test. So, like I said, these tests are going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. So once that final test has stopped running, it'll go ahead and stop. And then we will get a message that pops up on the screen that says success. So this means all of our tests have passed. Um, if you had any issues, then you would get an alternative message saying like, hey, these, these tests failed. Um, and at the very end here, we can actually view all of the information and all the different tests that were ran. Um, and this screen's a little bit more similar as to something we'd see on 12th gen and 13th gen PowerEdge servers. But yeah, we can go through here, see all the test results for each individual test, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, the information about the system health, the configuration, um, and we can even go into the event log, which is pretty useful. So that is how we do uh, Dell Diagnostics and how we can test our hard drives, but also, you know, everything else in our system. And if you really want to see if your system is healthy, then go ahead and run Dell Diagnostics. It'll give you a lot of information if all the components are working the way that they should. So now I'm going to show you how to test your hard drives with HD Sentinel. 
Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now, and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock. So you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.